Howdy! This is Jay Shell for EUG and AODL. Welcome back to my channel of various things keeping this old hermit alive. This is a photography one. This is a follow-up about the TT Artisan 20mm f2 lens on Fujifilm rangefinder style bodies. Uh, I already did one video that was kind of a first impressions and showing this lens profile on the X-Pro1 and the X-M1 bodies representing the biggest and the smallest rangefinder style Fuji bodies. But now look who's back, the X-E3. Uh, I traded mine away, regretted it, bought another one. Uh, this is a great little camera. But that's not what this video is about, but now we get to show it on this one as well. With the 30mm length of this lens, 1.2 inches. This is a very nice compact setup. And uh, I want to address a couple of comments uh, on the previous video that I thought made some good points. One is that I should show more pictures and show some more uh, images of this lens in low light or nighttime situations. That's not a bad idea. Now, this series is... I started doing these videos more kind of to show just some lenses on these bodies because some other reviewers, you know, definitely going into more technical reviews of lenses you don't see the lens on the body at all, or not on a body that matches what you have. Or sometimes people talk about a lens and they just have the lens free-floating. Or it's street photography POV and you're behind the camera all the time. I kind of wanted to see what some of these lenses look like on bodies that I have. And I think that Fujifilm's uh, rangefinder style bodies are very unique and very stylish and well I kind of thought other people might be interested in some of this so yes this is me waving these around while I talk about them but they are kind of reviews personal experience and while not a deep technical review on the technical qualities of the lens um, there's some of that in here. So, let's look at some more pictures. Uh, first, a set of pictures taken in broad daylight, uh, wide open, uh, which may not be the best idea in broad daylight, but that's where usually the interesting character of a lens might lie. So here are a few uh, around town. I always get ones of cranes and such because they are, they do can, bleh, because they're good at showing the distortions. So wide open in broad daylight, there is a little bit of vignetting and yeah, some kind of soft distortion in the corners. Not too bad and I think better than on the 7 Artisans 25mm f1.8 although I've not really done a direct head-to-head -head comparison I might because I do want to cover that lens because I have had that one for a year but uh, and here are here are a couple more of these shots in daylight These were on the, uh, these were on the XE3, using the vintage Agfa color recipe from Fuji X Weekly. So, I have grown to like this little lens quite a bit. Uh, now looking at the lens uh, in early morning, wide open again, uh, just some shots outdoors, in nature, a little bit before sunrise. Uh, 
These are on the X Pro 1. And so I have not gotten out at pure nighttime. So I wanted to try some of these uh, kind of earlier in the morning at lower light, shooting wide open and just playing with the XE or the X Pro. These are the X Pro ones. And well, that, that was another actually quite positive experience with this lens. I do not have the X Pro nearby to put this on, but that is shown in the other video with the this black lens on that black body. I like these short little lenses. Looks great on an X Pro and works quite well too. Here are a few indoor shots and in this first one, we do see uh, some of the lens flaring. And one of the other comments I got was compared the 25F2 from TT Artisan with the 23mm F1.4 from TT Artisan, which I plan on doing a, a full video on. But he mentioned that there's more multi-coatings on this lens and it is less susceptible to lens flare. And that's the 23F1.4 compared to the 25F2. And we certainly see that in uh, this shot. Now personally, I kind of like lens flare and aberration, so I lean into this. But it may not be something that you want. I have not tested this directly with this kind of effect we're seeing here with this lens flare, but coming up we do see some shots where at f2 there are a lot of like lens flares and circles, uh, kind of ghosting I guess, and they go away like immediately at like f2.4, the little stop between f2 and f2.8. I don't know if that's the case with this particular kind of lens flare we're seeing here. And a couple more indoor shots to show close focus. The downside of this lens for me is that its minimum focus distance is uh, 0.25 meters, 25 centimeters. That's not bad, and it actually worked well for some of these shots of fountain pen inks, but some other shots. The 23 f1.4, that one goes down to 20 centimeters, and that 5 centimeter difference when getting in close to things uh, is uh, a decent little difference. Uh, now we get into some not quite nighttime shots, but close. These are very early in the morning. Uh, before the sun comes up, you can see some stars in this picture and you definitely see these lens ghosting, I guess. Um, that's what they call these rings. If not, uh, someone correct me. I, I like these lens flares and I did find, and I don't have it on this picture, but I've got another picture I notice that though those are showing up and immediately one turn, one single click of the aperture dial and they went away. But I like them so I like knowing that I can lean into that with this lens. And that was a good tip about the multi-coatings. I don't know if this is single coating or what, but yeah, the f1.4 I have not noticed that behavior. So in low light, wide open, early dawn, this lens is good enough for me. I mean, definitely going a wider aperture than f2 benefits deep, deeper into night, but this is $55 or 64 dollars US right now, early October 2022. Um, either of those prices, it is a great deal 
for a lens this size, and I'm happy to have it in my lineup. Here are those ghosting effects again. I notice just the sun hitting and I wanted, ooh, I want to get my XM1 in this shot. And I quickly saw the lens flaring and remembered that comment. So I got this shot. This is at f2. And we see this flaring effect. Now I'm going to stop to like f2.4, f2.8. Pretty sure this is just right at like the, the next aperture stop up. Those uh, lens flares are gone. I liked them, so I kept trying to kind of bring them back. So here's a Another shot, got the XM1 turned around. Um, this is a beautiful Indus lens I got from uh, the Ukraine recently that I also plan on covering. That is the follow-up about the TT Artisan 25mm f2 lens. And after spending some more time with it, this has become, uh, I guess it's become a favorite. I've liked the 7 Artisan 25mm 1.8 because that also has some strange character to it and I have had a year with that but that also has very sensitive focus its aperture ring is clickless and they're both right next to each other and it's very easy to nudge one way or the other I do like this aperture ring feels very distinct I know and I've turned that versus the focus focus feels really nice on this lens I'm not bumping it as accidentally maybe they've uh, corrected that on the 7 artisan 25 millimeter 1.8 but again I like that lens but this is especially for its price uh, something I, I really enjoy. I've really liked this focal length over the past year as I've been kind of, you know, learning what I like to shoot and what makes me happy and what focal lengths I like. And I've kind of found that on APS-C, the 18 to 28 range is uh, kind of my happy space, which is about 28 to 40 in full frame equivalent. So this is right in that. Well, that's my report for the 25mm f2. For me, uh, given a choice between this and the 23mm f1.4, I would go for this, although that lens is a little... Uh, it does cost more, but it's still really, really well-priced at $100 US. And it does feel a bit more premium, but it also has some weirder behavior in its focusing. And there are other videos about that, but I should really save this for that video. And I should have stopped a bit ago.